So I've gone from thinking this is an absolute aeroplane to this is an absolute joke. Let's do JCB Triumph Hurdle, opening race of the day. This will be a quick one for me. I, I'm struggling to have a view of how I could even possibly play in this race now. Vauban and Pipe Pipe for me are the two standout horses. I don't really know how I could split them. I think they're both probably short enough-ish to be trying to dutch the pair of them, so I couldn't do it. I did quite like Porticello. His debut when he jumped like an absolute table, but I just I just don't think he's class enough for it. The thing I will touch on with Vauban, which goes back to Gaelic Warrior, which you're all going to love, is you know how Willie Munnin said in there that the, normally the juvenile is their derby. I've got big, bigger plans than that with Vauban got me very excited i was thinking oh my god champion hurdle for the future this is going to be an absolute monster then he said he's going to take him to the melbourne cup is that what he said yeah he said, he like yeah, he said melbourne cup so he's I've the gone, speed to win the melbourne cup so i've gone from thinking this is an absolute airplane so this is an absolute joke so it put me right off so gaelic warrior must be that good if he's made voban go off to australia daryl what do you make of the race anything you're really keen on now because you were on voban before weren't you yeah, I want Vauban at 10s or 12s or whatever it was. Yeah, I, I still think he wins. I, I like him a lot. I think he's a very, very smart horse. Um, and yeah, I, I, I don't want to see him. I don't want to see him beat, and I can't see him beat. So. Nice, George. Yeah, I find I'd like to say it's like hard to put Vauban on high five, but you have to think the track's probably going to suit Phil all better, but he's going to need it wet, so it's probably not going to be there for him. I thought the really eye-catching one at Leopardstown Oak. Uh, Dublin Racing Festival with Ileti Tom in, in behind, sort of probably against against the pace bias. There didn't jump very well. First hurdle star did well to make up ground as he did, um, and it's probably one of those that he'll just chuck in the deep end if he wins. Great if he doesn't, he's still a novice for next year, so nothing to lose really. But I think enough people are picking up on him, and when you've got Mobile Pied Piper and Phil Door at the front, it's not really like it's a great race to be having a stab at each way either. So. He's one that if he was a an extra place on the day, maybe, but I'm a bit reluctant at the moment. Yeah, fair enough. Jamie, I think were you more Pied Piper than Vauban when we talked about this last time? Yeah, I'm still Pied Piper to been around the track. My only worry about him, I watched the race back there uh last week, that he he kind of looked like he was struggling at the top of the hill, and then all of a sudden he whipped around the whole field and it looked like a very, very good horse. Uh, to be honest with you, with Vauban, I think he'd be more suited to the older track. I think he's a speed horse, to be honest with you. Um, I think if they go quicker, he might struggle with his jumping. Uh, I don't like Phil Dorr. Phil Dorr is run and he's won to beat whoever. Like, he probably needs a bog. And, like, look at his race at Down Rider. Maybe people are put up C sessions for the fucking boots. Like, my God, that horse has absolutely fucking no chance in the, in, in the boodles. And Phil Dorr beat it Down Rider. And it was an absolute bog that day. And they, that was the mighty Potter one he's made in her as well, like so. And it was an absolute bog up there, so it's Pied Piper for me. He looks like he looks a really good horse, and like that day they thought Vauban was going to beat him. Now there's still there's r- rumors and this, and they say this and hearsay after that. Like Gordon, Henry didn't even expect Pied Piper to win that day. Not very good ride by Davy Ross. There's no question of that, right? But for me, it's Pied Piper because he's been around the track. Yeah. I think that's it. Vauban's comments, like I say, from Winnie Mines did really excite me, but the, thing, the comments since have lacked that. Do you think, to be honest with you, Dave, for a triumph hurl, and sorry, cut across you, for a triumph hurl, because I think they have, he's too much speed. I think whatever about the Melbourne Cup, I think Vauban is next year's champion hurlers. Yeah, so that's what I was hoping, but I guess we'll have to see. He's going to need to go and win this triumph first, isn't he? But hopefully he can. Should we move on to the county hurdle, where I do have a strong fancy here? I know everyone's going on about State Man, everyone's going on about Echoes and Rain can be a county horse, but Jesse Evans wins the county hurdle. I've already made my case. I'm pretty sure I've made my case to all of you individually. Basically, that great wood hurdle form is decent. Now, I know it's very, like, say very hard. You'd, you'd have to really excuse that run because there wasn't really an excuse for it. Like, he just he just got beat. It was well fancy on the day. They had the uh, uh, claimer on board, didn't they? And you'd think that if he's that type of horse that could be ridden by a claimer, that he should have performed. But he didn't, so never mind. He is a flat ready horse. Same as, like, Cormier was in behind. He'll be better suited by this track. The fact that they kept him off since makes me think that there was something up that day. And we've already talked about that great wood form that stack out of all those winners coming up in behind. So... They fancy Jeff, Jesse Evans that day, like quite a lot. I fancy Jeffy Evans in the uh, county hurdles. About 16s, I think. So I think the price is still about right. Wouldn't want to be back him if you went single figures. I think there'd be probably some sort of sleeper in there. Daryl, you must have something for the county. You love it. 
yeah, West Cork uh, for me. Uh, I think he'll take a world of beating. Um, I didn't want convinced that it was his true running last time and said he had an, had an overreach injury. Christ, how many horses they've had, a, had overreach injuries this season? Uh, I don't know, but he, uh, Harry Scout was very, very easy on him. Um, it, just the form is just so strong for him not to be well handicapped off one for one. Um, uh, he's got up six pounds. You look at the winners that have come out of that race. Obviously, we've spoken about that already. Uh, he's been primed for this, I think. Uh, think he might get a little bit bigger on the day because people are sort of it's one of those horses that everyone immediately after the race everyone's like this is the county hurdle winner this is the county hurdle winner. you get closer and closer and closer and everyone go oh i'll have a look at him i'll have a look at that one i'll have a look at that that's got a good chance that's and he, what happens is he just sort of drifts out a little bit and you end up getting decent value on him so um I, I'm, I'm very much still on this uh west cork bandwagon but there's lots of chances george we'll make jamie go last again it's the theme of the evening yeah, I agree with Daryl. I have to be West Cork for everything he says. Harry Skelton dropped his whip sort of after the last on that great, great wood run as well. So he can probably mark it up a bit more than the bare form, which is ridiculous as it stands. But I sort of think Jesse Evans went off 11 to 2, like you say. West Cork's gone off 11 to 1, probably driven by the absence. But if sort of the market and everyone that's factoring into that thinks Jesse Evans had twice as good a chance and he's got whatever the swing he's got now. He's now three three times the price, whatever he is. You've probably got to give him a shout. So everything from that Greatwood line, we're having a look at, but West Cork mainly. And the other one that's a bit of interest is Gringo Dorbrell. Um, so a few similar form lines to the one you've just shouted out in the Mayor's Novice, sort of second to Blazing Carl. Then beaten ultimately chosen when he didn't look the most straightforward, to be fair, but he's rated seven pounds higher in Martin Pipe and sort of fairly near the top of the betting for that since came over to the Chalo and it was a bit of a weird ride there, I thought. Sort of came wide in the shallow behind Stage Star. Didn't look like the strongest of sayers and trip. And that's sort of meant that he couldn't have got, couldn't get the highest of rating, I think. So then he was back out again a couple of weeks later behind Dice Art Dynamo. And sort of, I mean, it's no shame being beaten 20 lengths by Dice Art Dynamo, but still battered the rest of them. He's only got a rating of one through one three five, and there's plenty of horses in there that he's, been, that he's beaten or been sort of run, running close that have got ratings sort of between seven and ten pounds higher at least so that's an interesting one at about 20 to one but it, that great wood forms the line i'm going to be taking more strongly elsewhere i think just the evans for you as well then jamie <laughs> Um, I suppose you have to, Dave, since you said on the exchange uh, podcast that you did with the boys that you're talking to the owner and they think he'll win. And you know, that, that's what Don't sorry, talk about viewers. Jamie, it was a nightmare. What? Don't, that, that was an absolute nightmare of a morning. <laughs> but anyway, I suppose we've been talking, George, about a horse that probably got too much tax and it's a lime again of Patty and. We were there looking at him. What a weird ride he got in the DRF. And it's my mate, Mozzie. I think he's got too much tax from the British handicapper. But if you're looking at a potential grade two, grade one horse in the race, I think my mate, Mozzie, is. To be honest with you. Um, after that, I don't really fancy anything else. I think my mate, Mozzie, runs. I think he'll win. Very nice. So we can move on now to... The potato race, which should be the Gold Cup. I mean, it's not, but it's one of my favourite races. This year, I've not really got too far stuck into it. I keep looking at it, and then there's only one horse that I keep falling back onto over and over and over. So I think I'm going to save myself to last. Jamie, what's your views on the Albert Bartlett? Obviously, we know a few horses probably aren't going to be coming here. Who do you like? Who's left? Um... I suppose he's well found in the market now, Dave, and all true form. And I know Daryl said that race with Journey with me and Ted Crop was like 22 seconds slower in that maiden hurt over two and a half miles in the first time of Christmas. But with the race, the way it panned out in the Dublin Racing Festival with him second to Mamela Kukuner, I think Mamela Crooner, sorry, is the winner. I think the stare, slog, bloody boat, fucking race, whatever you call it, I hate the race manager, Joe, but I think he's the one. And I, look, he's well found 72 4 to 1. Uh, he is for me, and I think he's the winner. Fair enough. George, what do you fancy in the race? Uh, the other market leader, Hillcrest, did. He's over his hail of exertions, which as a chance he might not be because it was pretty testing ground that day, and he's pulled a long way clear and sort of 
broken one's half about halfway around, I think, and then beaten off all the closes as well. He looks like an absolute weapon, I think. It's probably one that needs to make hay while he's sound because he's that big that something could quite easily go wrong with him and they'll never get back. Um, but he's just an absolute unit. It looks like he's going to keep going all day long. I mean, he was good enough to win over two and a half at the course when he wasn't really fully extended. And I just think nothing's really going to get that close to him with that massive long running, two flights in the last seven furlongs. They're going to do well to get near, get near him. The one, obviously you've got the worry about him being fully fit after the Haydock run, which is tempering enthusiasm again a little bit. The other one that seems, I mean, this was a stupid plunge after some bloke put him up on Twitter the other day and it went from like 20s into 12s or something. It's just ridiculous. What can change the market now? But Barden's town lad looked, I mean, he was looked like a little shit of horse, really, when he won here in October. He sort of had a bit of a tack malfunction, apparently. Got to the front, wandered around all over the place, looked like he had loads in hand, and then was put away until he came back out. At, I think it was at Musselburgh. He looks a lot more straightforward there. And, and John McConnell basically had one with exactly the same prep in Streets of Doyen last time, who came third in the race. So he's one that I can see running into a place, but I'll be kidding myself if I thought he was good enough to win it, to be quite honest. Yeah, fair enough. Daryl, who have you worked with down to you? Because you've done all right on this race in the past. Yeah, no big price winner this year. Hillcrest will take a world of beating if he runs in this. A world of beating. Um, he's he's just an absolute machine. Uh, he ran, do you know, at Haydock, he ran the final, um, final uh, what was it, two furlongs faster than Paul Sello did over two miles. Jesus. He's an absolute beast. This horse, this is a proper old-fashioned Albert Barlett horse. He'd go from the front. He will, he will not. Whoever passes him will beat him. But he's got so much scope for improvement. Um, he's a gorgeous horse. He's going to make into a lovely chaser. Uh, I think he'd take. I think honestly, I think he'd take a world of beating. I think the one that I, the other one I like is uh, Manila Kakuna, uh, who won at uh, Leopardstown obviously last time, beating Milena Kruna. Um, I think he's been underestimated. I think horses that have come from the uh, from that race into the Albert Bartlett, I've got a record of like two, two, five, two, two, something like that. Um, so it's it usually a good pointer to this race if they decide to go this route. I think he's been underestimated, and uh, hopefully they'll remove the hood and uh, he'll be able to settle. And there could be more improvement to come when that comes off. Um, I've got a feeling he might end up being he might wear that hood like to the start or something. Um, I mean, it might come off. But them two for me, uh, I don't think this is a, a really strong race. I did like the performance of the of the nice guy, uh, at Nace, but um, coming here after one hurdle run, never ideal, is it? Uh, I didn't think there was too much further down the market either. Uh, Hillcrest, I think, could just take a well. Honestly, he's fast. Would you not be worried? I, I know he's fast. But would we worried about him body hopping uh, hurdles in the better for Berlin? No, he just kick him out of the way. He don't care, do he? Yeah, he he just kick him out of the way. He, like he will just. He's what about? Just, what I know about what he's saying. He lands on all, all fours. Was it, who, who, sorry, no, Gerald. Who was on him in Haydock? Uh, Richard Patrick. Yeah. Uh, was he on him in Cheltenham? Yeah. yeah. You worried about that soft fall he had at Cheltenham, or it was just a lack of concentration, or just Patrick yeah, just, just fell off? One of them things. Just one of them things. Yeah. Like a it, horse says. Gone round Haydock in a, like an excellent time for him. Yeah, yeah, Very yeah. deep ground. It's just he's a hardy horse. He killed off, oh, he killed off a decent animal in Green Book there, like Green Book. He absolutely yeah. killed him off. It was the way he tried to come up to him to give him something to think about. He just, he just broke his heart. He yeah. just broke his heart. It was is it, it was an unbelievable performance. An unbelievable performance, honestly. Like like George said, providing he's not left his race there, which I don't see why he should. He's a big horse. He. Yeah. He if looks like he could take his racing. Yeah. Um, I, I, it goes on any ground. He's quick. Been over two and a half. Stays. His future's undoubtedly over three and probably further than that in time. Probably be a national horse in a few years. Um, oh, I think he's I think he's taken well a world of beat there. But they're thinking about skipping this and going to Aintree. So, look, if he goes here, I think he wins. Yeah, and that's the beauty of it, I suppose. You trust the trainers, don't you? That if they if they run them, they're running them because they know that they're there, or they know to the best of their justice. And then obviously, if they don't run, then 
then they weren't going to win anyway. That, I, that, Jamie did touch on it there. I was going to say anyway, because obviously he's a monster horse. That unseat, I watched it back in that North Lodge race. And like it's, I watched it a couple of times. It's like it's the softest unseat you'll ever see. And then I just hear nothing but comments on previews where people are saying that this horse is like 18 or 19 hands high. Like he's a monster. So that's a tiny thing that worries me. We know what the Albert Bartlett's like. There's always a massive field. Can get a little bit congested in there. That's the only... He'll Neg- be on the front end. He'll be up on the front, up front of the pace. He won't be in behind horses. That's for sure. He's not quick enough no, to, not to pick up. But not, but because they go quicker in the, like the early stages, isn't they? I wonder whether that early jumping might see him fall back with. Yeah, I, I, I like him if he if he did end up coming here. The one you did mention though is the one that I just whenever I look at the race, I just keep coming back to him. That like I don't really like Bardenstown lad, and I I I just I don't get why people think he should. Such be a man, such a man's fucking thing is it, George? Blair White, now he's fucking harping him up to the nines, isn't he? Fucking yeah, yeah but he's, he's been on him for a while. That's fine, isn't it? You people are allowed to have ones they like, aren't they? But I like this is like Daryl did just mention him. We talked about him after he won, and it isn't ideal to go in there. But the nice guy, his uncle is Messini's Maguire that won the Ballymore two thousand and seven. That would have been. So I talk about like siblings and stuff that it's not necessarily the best thing when it goes into the chat and stuff, but. I'm willing to bypass that for the nice guy. He got a race and post rating of 141 for that debut win at Nays. Because I, it's, again, it's just someone else's numbers in it. But I watched it and I thought it was good. Daryl watched it and said that he thought it was quite good as well. Will he like name check this race after as well? Obviously, like Mimela, Manella Kakuna could be coming here, but he's talked about the fact that he's not in a rush to run. Maybe Ramilly's in here as well. Will he does typically run at least a couple in this race? I just think the nice guy, he is a seven year old. He hasn't had the experience that some other Albert Bartlett type B horses have but his two bumpers were pretty good wins as well I, I, I'm still when I watched the race back I still can't believe how impressive that performance was and I think him at tens looks like he's just a, a, a genuine prospect in the race I do need to still get into it a little bit deeper but Manella Kruna I think his racing post rating in that race where he was behind Manella Kakuna was only 142 so there's not a lot for him to find considering he could progress for more racing so he's this year's Statler he is Probably, isn't it? Yeah. Right. Shall we move on? Yeah. Gold Cup time. So I can keep this one fairly short. I'm just, I always struggle in the Gold Cup because they are ultra competitive, aren't they? If it was gun to head and someone said to me, you have to have a hundred pound bet on this race, I'd have a hundred on Manella Rindo. George, who wins the Gold Cup? I'd have 100 on Manala Rindo as well, I think. I don't quite see how Apritar can turn. I know Manala Rindo's not been great this year, but he wasn't great last year until the Gold Cup. Last time was a lot more promise, and I'm not quite sure how Apritar can turn the form around with him. Galvin, if the, if the ground came up genuinely like good, soft, or virgin on good, you'd have to be interested in Galvin, I think, just on his record on those sorts of conditions around the track. But the price feels like it's gone a bit there. Mm. Um, and the one... So Albert Foto worked in cheap pieces apparently the other day and hoping that's going to perk him up a bit. The bit that worries me with all of these, especially Galvin Indo and Albert Foto, and probably Tornado, Tornado Flyer, the way he's going to be ridden, is that I've no idea what on earth is going to be the front runner or what's even going to vaguely be in the front half of the field, to be quite honest. So they, they, I know they're all sort of stayers and they're going to have a bit of pace just because of how classy they are. But the more I think about it, I'm sort of, I'm, you know, I'm going to get slated for this. I'm half siding with Protector Axe. He's got a bit of bit more pace if it does end up into a real slow one. And I just can't get my head up, head around how keen he was at Aintree when it was heavy. And he was almost keen the whole three and a quarter miles and tanked his whole way around and tanked his way through the finish line. And I know it wasn't a great race, but I just I was watching it and I, I'll be honest, I was laying him and running thinking he's so keen, he's never going to get home here. And he just never stopped. And... That stuck with me a bit. He's fresh for it. He's young. He's unexposed at the trip. And just really on how the race might set up, I think it might suit him. And he might just have a little bit more pace alongside conflated than the others that are probably better horses, but not going to get the race run to suit. Mm, like it. Daryl, bullish for anything in here? Yeah, I think Galvin's going to take world beating. I, I I really don't understand why everybody just wants to just to like pass it over him. What I don't understand what he's done wrong. How is he not an eleven to four favourite for this? He's already beaten a Plutard uh, in a, in a tactical race that probably didn't suit him. You know he's he's an out and out stayer. He won the National Hunt Chase. We know he stayed extremely well. He absolutely loves Cheltenham. He's gonna get gonna get decent ground that he, that he absolutely thrives on. 
Um, he's improving with every single start. Like, I just love the way this horse has been campaigned throughout his career and kept relatively fresh. Like, I don't know. I don't know what you've got to make excuses for a Plutar, and you've got to find reasons why he didn't pick up Manila Indo last year when he had his chance there. That I thought that was his chance gone. Um, Manila Indo, I've I've already backed and tipped anti post at nine to one. So I thought it was just absolutely ludicrous that people were saying he's completely gone at the game after his two runs this season when he had when he simply had excuses for them. He never it never goes well fresh. And Kempton first time cheap pieces was just all wrong for him. Went out to nine to one after that. He's a spring horse. He loves Cheltenham, so he's going to have a chance. I think Protector has got a fair chance, but off the rest, I, I just I just don't like him. Like, like I've taken. I've taken the runners out of this field that I don't think would run. And I'm left with a Plutard, Galvin, Nilla Indo, Protector Rat, Album Photo, Tornado Fly, Shantry House, Royal Pagai, Santini, and I write. Like, Christ. You, you know the record of uh, horses coming back and trying to attempt to win the Gold Cup again after they failed is, is a poor one. Um, so for me, a Plu, the likes of a Plutard, Album Photo, I couldn't have um, Santini, no. I write a 66 to one chance. He might make the run in. Shantry House was beyond poor last time. And I know they're saying that they're, he's working really well and he looks like a completely different horse at home or whatever AP McCoy said. I, I'm sorry. I just can't have it. He's never looked a real natural chaser to me uh, at all. I don't think that Tornado Fly has got the stamina for this. I know he won a King George very, very rarely. I mean, Dave, you'll be able to tell us when the last one was that um, the King George winner and the Gold Cup winner in the same season. Uh, it, it, I think... Who? Kicking King. Kicking King, yeah. I um I, I think he needs an absolutely blistering gallop to uh, uh to aim at. And I don't know if uh I don't know if he's gonna get it, and I don't know if he's gonna stay this three mile two and a half up a stiff finish either. So I couldn't have him. Um so yeah, I was left with Protector at Manero Indo and Galvin. Uh the only one I haven't backed is Protector at. But I just think Gal I just I can't find any faults with Galvin. I really can't. If someone can tell me, I'm happy to listen. But I think he's a. Uh, I think he's got a great chance. Lovely, Jamie. What do you fancy? I suppose to the start of the season, Dave. I was harping on to you about a blue tar, but I was just very disappointed. You said the record of a bet fair chase when they're going on to win the gold cup and all that for a long time. Obviously, Peter the commander and Cotta Star were probably exception to the rule. Um, I was very disappointed, Leperstown. Um, she probably doesn't stay. I've come to that thing in my head that she doesn't quite get the three two. And to be honest, I think Manila Indo probably broke its heart last year in the Gold Cup. I have it down to two. Um, and it's it depends on the it's between like Manila Indo, you know, the way he ran and always blows out for a Gold Cup in Leperstown. Doesn't really like Leperstown, right? And was second to complete that day and was close up. I've never seen Indo in a trial being that close up before a Gold Cup or even a race before Cheltenham. So, obviously, it's come back to Gold Cup. But I'm, for some reason or another, I fancy Galvin for, at the start of the season for the Grand National. But now I'm certainly starting to fancy him for the Gold Cup. Two reasons. One, he's proven. And the other reason is that, as George said, where's the pace of the race coming from, right? And then... Remember now, with Gavin's campaign before the National Chase, he was campaigning before he went to Cheltenham in October, before he ran over three miles. All his runs were two miles, two and a half miles. So he has the speed at the end to get up the hill. And to, has, he probably has more speed in a minute, though, and a good start, and protect threat, in my opinion. Yeah, so I think Gavin now, I'm on him. I backed him a couple of weeks ago at a good, nice price. So I got six, seven to one or something. I'm happy. And I think now I'm slowly but surely agreeing that I think he'll win the Gold Cup, Galvin, yeah. Happy days. So, fairly competitive renewal, maybe. But Galvin, I guess, is the overriding sound from the crowd. Fox Hunters, the second best race on the car behind the Albert Bartlett. Bob and Co win. Someone tell me I'm wrong. George, you hate me. Go, George. Tell me I'm wrong. Uh, the, the two that I had half an interest in neither of them are going to run so yeah I mean Billaway he's had his chances hasn't he I'm not sure you can go near him but I didn't really think everyone was saying Bobbico was travelling brilliantly he was going to win it last year I didn't see that I thought he was beaten when he came down to be honest but 
We'll see. If Shantou Fly ran instead of Bobenko, I think I'd fancy him more, to be honest, but it's not really a race I can get excited about. Yes, Shantou Festival, I can't remember the numbers, but he's been placed like the last five festivals, isn't he? Or something ridiculous. Something stupid, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, he's the backup for Bob and Co, isn't he? But Bob and Co wins. Daryl, Bob and Co wins? Uh, no, I'll just give you a mention. I'll give you a mention for free very quickly. Uh, Dubai Quest has won his last seven. He's a rapidly improving horse. Um, he beat LeBroy last time out of Weatherby. He's oh. given him nine pounds. Um, race running a good time as well. Rate right 137. Hasn't got too much to find um, with a few of these. And uh, he's a 12 to 1 shot. Not often do you see horses won his last seven be a 12 to 1 shot. The other one's Highway Jewel. Uh, she won at, uh, at Cheltenham um, in January and in April. Uh, she's rapidly improved. Uh, not not in January, sorry, in, in April. She's rapidly improving. She jumped slightly out to her right, but it didn't stop her uh, absolutely hosing up in a mayor's hunter's chase. Uh, she's got a bit to find on the ratings, but um, she beat Hazel Hill back in December by 25 length. Absolutely destroyed that horse. And uh, I think she's a she's a smart horse. She she was only touched off by late night pass as well at Warwick and Open Hunters Chase, which is a fairly good form. The World's End was back in third, so I like that piece of form. Two of those twelve to one. The other one is um, a horse called Rewrite the Rules for David O'Brien. Was a two hundred to one shot when I mentioned him on the Betfair podcast, but um, it's sixty six to one now. They've they've realised that any horse being two hundred to one at a Fox Hunters Chase is probably a bit silly. Uh, this horse got to give the last couple of runs. Went from um Shark Hanlon to, to David O'Brien, uh, finished three lengths behind a horse called D's to BFs. That form ties in with a lot of these at the top of the market. Uh, if you go back and watch the run at Aintree last, was it last year? Uh, well, yeah, Aintree in the, at the Grand National meeting last year, pulled up first time tongue tie rope, but traveled through the race really, really strongly. Just couldn't quite jump those fences in all honesty and I, th- I thought that was quite a, quite an interesting run had Bill away well behind until made a mistake and then just was just given a very easy time and then Bill away just stayed on and stayed on like was being ridden past and stuff um, fell behind Stake and Wallace beat Alpha Mal twice five lengths behind uh, winged leader last year when held up at the rear of the field in a very slowly run race that winged leader dictated um, it came right from the rear of the field. Chase home just couldn't pick him up. I think he's got some nice bits and pieces in form in there for a 66 to one shot. Um, that if they decide to come here, I think he, he could have a fair chance. I mean, they don't take much selling, but that's actually a reasonable sell, isn't it? I think it beat Wing Leader as well. I'm just scrolling back through its form, albeit a while back. Jamie, Bob and Co win. <laughs> I say, to be honest with Dave, what a stop. Oh, God, it's the worst <laughs> race in all fucking meeting. Is Great that value, bad? Man. It's that bad that I think finally Billaway is going to win because there's no poor luck being the rest. Uh, they were miles scared of the rest of last year. Look, I know Bob and Cole when Caesar was the third last, but he looked beaten to me. And I know he came back at Punchestown and beat Billaway. The fact of the matter, Punchestown is a speed track, and that's how he beat him, right? So for me, finally, it's Billaway's day because it's that bad. There's no... The improvers, you could say, an improver in the Fox Hunters, are too far behind to, to catch up to Joe. So I at this present time. So I think you could have a like and it came to pass an absolute fucking turn up. Do you know what I mean? So it's Billy Way for me. He'll finally win. Can you can we just never mention it came to pass again? He was a horse that was in my tracker for so long and we backed him the April before. Do you know what do you know where he won do you know where he won it came to pass day before he won the Fox Hunter? It won a Clarity. Oh, I should have known. Anyway, let's never mention that horse again because it's physically making me feel sick. Let's move on to George's favourite race of the uh, the festival. Ah. I'm going to poke you, mate, because we've been recording too long for this. Let's just not even have the argument live on air. You'll be pleased to know that you're in good company because Daryl Carter disagrees with me too, and I'm pretty sure Jerry Rembrandt as well. I fancy Concertista in this. I think Concertista will... I totally agree with you, Dave. Yes, one too. Fuck you. Fuck you, George and Daryl. Right, Constantine. Best horse in the race by country mine. Yep, she wins. Uh, no. Right. Maybe, maybe over hurdles. Go on then. You two go on, take it in turns. Go on, go on. on. Take this on. Take this on. Do you want to go, Daryl? Well, she, she's been at least £10 below her hurdle form over fences. Still good enough to win this. No, it's she not. She won't stay. It is, it is. What, what, would, you, would you back Ellie May in a battle? I have backed Ellie May quite heavily. Yeah, so have I. But would you be worried about her up a hill in a battle? No, absolutely not. Not with a cheap piece. 
She battled all the way with Cole Reevey last year in the best form, and she was getting barged into the whole way. What? No women. Nah, nah. I, I, that's what worried me is is that she'd be bad in a battle with Concertista. I don't think it'll even get to get to a battle with Concertista. In all honesty, the first time, she, the uh, second time, cheap pieces will help that with that as well. So I think that's a reason to bring out improvement in there. Uh, Mount Ida yeah. jumps violently out to the right. Yeah. Um, they say they fixed these back issues, but she still did it at Fairy House last time. They kept her right-handed the last twice, and uh, she got away with it in the Kim Yule. It was an absolutely exactly. fantastic performance, but that was over three miles. She's not going to get away with it over two and, a, two and a half here at this pace on good spring ground. Ellie May's been crying out to get back on some decent ground. The form of Cole Reevy last year is absolutely rock solid. The best form in this race by a country mile, um, and I think she's going to take a world of beating Ellie May. There you oh. go. Concertista. No chance. Battle on the... oh, Two oh, against two, so Concertista versus Ellie May. I mean, no, no point talking about anything else in the race, is there? We'll have to just no. see different views no. on it. But we're equally as bullish as you two are on the other one, so that probably shows the Move on to the best race in the meeting. Yeah. Martin Pike, conditional handicap hurdle. To be honest with you, this is a race where there's going to be plenty that are probably going to be mentioned and plenty that have got a chance, but I will say nothing because... I'm pinning my colours to the last, and I'm just gonna I'm just gonna ride them out now. Just gonna ride those colours out. Jamie, you got anyone to add to the to the list? I know we said it earlier, Dave. Um, it's between State Man and Wanker Dan. Um, it's between the two. I'm like, sorry, no, and I agree. Like we were talking about it before. Like this is has to be the worst piece of bullshit, anti-Irish. I'm yeah, sorry. Definitely. Anti-Irish fucking handicapping here. It's an absolute disgrace. How your man still has a fucking job, I never know. And if Langerdan rocks up, that fella should be shot by a fucking Irishman because it's an absolute joke. Drop three pound for a fucking... He was only beating fucking six lengths at Taunton. Seven, maybe, tops, right? And now he's fucking off one three seven two pounds. What? Three pounds fucking lower than last year? Uh, Two pound higher, I don't give a fuck now just that, right? But anyway... If chimes, it's Gene Stateman, Langer Dan. I suppose our little Brian Eichmann, George is, is the pull job on Ash Tree Meadow the last day for Gordon Elliott. Uh, would be a little one that I had fancy 16 to 1 each way. And I looked at the race last day, he definitely has a chance. But to be honest with you, it's Gene Stateman and Langer Dan. And if we go back to the old cliche, you have to have a grade one horse to win a handicap. That's Stateman for me. Daryl? You've um, decided to go with him, yeah? I've backed both of them. That's why. Uh, I've, back- I've backed both of them already. Um, and uh, I can't, I, on it, I honestly, I'm going to back the forecast. I honestly cannot see it out, out of these. I can't see anything else getting involved. I think these two, State Man is, is, could be potentially very well handicapped off a mark of 141. Langer Dam is very well handicapped off a mark of 100. Is very, very well handicapped. Like, even going back to last year's run behind Gallop into Champs, right, the race was run at a pretty steady pace. He came from the rear of the field weaving through horses to get to Gallop into Champs at quarters. And but do you agree me there, Jim, for sorry if I got the crash, did you hear me? I thought he got an awful ride. I don't know if it was an awful ride. I'd just say... In a way, an awful ride because of the pace, of... the pace of the race. I thought he got an awful ride. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, perhaps. Yeah, but yeah. Um, it probably get a stronger pace on this, this time yeah. around. Um, I, I honestly think it's between the two. I think they'll only get shorter on the yeah. day from even even now. At, what are they now? It's looking, fair, it's four look, and five to one. It's looking like a Galapen and fucking Bob Allinger race. Looks like a match already into the fucking handicap. Absolutely. Um, yeah. And Jamie's right, it was a ludicrous, ludicrous bit of handicapping from the from the English assessor to drop. It's basically, it. we want to get 10 winners on the fucking board handicapping there. Like. <laughs> Seriously, um, like fucking disgrace. I'm sorry, it's just, I'm, I'm not being anti Irish British right now. It's a fucking disgrace. <laughs> Oi, shut up, you've had your fun. Ah, <laughs> oh, um, fuck off. Um, I think, uh, yeah, I think it's between the two. I'm confident on the two. I, the reason yeah. I, I, I put I put Langer down on the Betfair column at three points because. We still are unsure, really. I mean, it looks highly likely State Man will go here, but we're unsure where he's going to go. And the reason I put Langer Dan on the Betfair column was because if State Man does, we know Langer Dan's going here. If State Man goes somewhere else, this won't be beat. And it will go off, well, any price you like. 
any any price. He's worth a stupid price then. Yeah, he will. Because if State Man decides, if they decide to go Ballymore with State Man or something, <sighs> it's game over. Lane. Well, like yeah, I agree with you there. If they put Dice Hart Dynamo and Sir Gerhard in the Supreme, State Man will run the Ballymore and he put, he'll win the Ballymore. Exactly. So that that's that was my thinking behind the Langer Down three pointer. That yeah. honestly, Dave, Dave, if you're even considering any any shitty little plots further down the field that you want to look that up, maybe two or three pounds well in, don't bother. The, the goofer. Don't bother. No, I was just no, I was just gonna, I wanted to know what George was gonna say about the matter. Oh. <laughs> um so when Lang- Langadan got dropped three pounds last evening, because I was half thinking State Man might go to the county, because there was all this. Noise about that's why Rich Deegan was on last time because he was plotted up for the pipe and all this. But there's a, I think the rule is you're not passed as a conditional jockey unless you're 26 or younger. I mean, I think you said Jamie's sort of a good five years older than that. Rich, so that's Richie nonsense. Deegan's 31. Yeah, 31. So that's nonsense. They're going to have to get another conditional on. Um, and probably is a cousin. He has a cousin, probably, or something like that. We don't even know about probably George. If, if, <laughs> earlier in the season, if he was not, if he was going to go to the county. I thought State Man might go for the Imperial <laughs> Cup double again, and I was sort of looking for a stupid little plot. And Ashtree Meadow was the one that fitted the bill for me, sort of looking like he hadn't really been trying. When he did eventually win, not a great time. They had to put a hood and tongue tie on to do it. But Davey Russell afterwards was saying that he basically had to put him into the bottom of every one of the hurdles to slow him down, otherwise he was going to run away with it and win too far. And he said that in an interview afterwards, which I thought was quite incredible, really. The last. The run last time, I'm not sure what to make of it. Obviously, it did a job in keeping handicap mark down against one that ran third in the DRF in a big handicap hurdle. So it's probably not the worst run and might want a bigger field. But with what's happened to Langer Down and if State Man turns up, I've really called on him. And it's sort of race that now I'm just going to wait and see what, especially for Gordon Elliott, what the best jockeys are on because it's. I think they did away with them. The claim, the condition was actually claiming a few years ago as well. So it's like. You've got Gainford and Fitzgerald, but Fitzgerald's Gain- not going to have another two pounds. Gainford surely be on chemical energy jars, wouldn't he? You think so, but there's there's Fitzgerald in there. There's one up for grabs, isn't there? And there's a few others, so I'm not sure. But there is one that's 50 to 1 at the minute that I do actually think has got a better chance than it might suggest. And he's on 135, and that's got you in most of the last few years. He's got some, he's followed appreciated at home in a bumper. Uh, sorry, I'll give you the name. Freedom to Dream. Followed Appreciate at Home in a Bumper. Won his maiden hurdle over two and a half. Sort of was second in a grade two and heavy at Limerick to Eric Bloodax. And he round him home bend. He sort of looked like he might have been the winner that day and then tired out of it late on. And then he ran in that um, Nathaniel Lacey two mile six race at the DRF behind Manella Kakuna, Kruna, and the rest of them. And he's only rated 135. And if he was with a bigger yard, He's got the graded form. He's got his maiden win. He's got the bumper form. He'd be, well, teens tops, I think. It's just the fact that he's with Peter Farhi, that he's fit, like 50s in a place and 33s elsewhere. He's not guaranteed to get in, but the profile's absolutely perfect for what you want for the race, I think. And it's just George, connections. George, do you know my mate you met at the DRF? You are? You remember my mate that uh, you met at the Dublin Racing Festival? Don't remember him. Yeah, oh, you remember him. And he said fucking freedom to dream with you as well. <laughs> oh, did he? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That'll be, be where I got it from then. Yeah. No, sorry, I remember your mate. I didn't remember what he said. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He said to me today, <laughs> freedom to dream. <laughs> and he, oh. he goes, and he said, remember, he said fancy foundations as well. And he go, he said, you fucking kill George after saying freedom to dream. <laughs> Freedom to Dream needs about eight miles, though, didn't he? Anywho, it's one of those races. It's going to be a fascinating ending one. And I, the, the best part is you get sometimes it can be a little bit lethargic after the gold cup, can't it? But I think more people than anything are anticipating the Martin Pipe just to see how long it <laughs> does. Just because, in theory, with what's happened, he should die, shouldn't he? I'm not 100% sold into most of you. I'll just put it out there. I know he might have been dropped and it's probably plotty, but... I don't know, it could be pants, running the boodles, didn't he? They don't not always that, got that longevity, these juveniles. Once they reach the ripe old age of six, they may be on the decline. Anywho, the gopher, gopher wins the mountain pipe. Right, I think we're done. Let's do naps for Friday and then let's all go to bed because this has been about four hours. George, nap for Friday. Don't Hell say it. Yes, good. Daryl, nap for Friday. Uh, hold on. Don't say it. Uh. Hold on. 
You've got to say the Gold Cup for crying out loud. Uh, Langadan. Uh, <laughs> Langadan Cup. The, the forecast, Langadan State, man. What about Galvin? How 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 high does Galvin rate on your line oh, now? Galvin will be a big bet. And what about Ellie May? Ellie May is already a big bet. Because to be fair, historically, you come to the fore when it comes to the last couple of days compared what? to. Honestly, my my I feel like my stronger hand is the last two days. Um, so I don't want to be panicking. If Constitution Hill goes in the first, I'll be very happy. Um, because that will get me through the two days that I'm probably not as strong as I would like to be. The last two days, I'm hoping I've got very, very strong hands. So even Vauban, man, there's there's yeah. literally the last day. There's plenty you're going to be fairly keen in there. Jamie, your nap for Friday? Stay in my order. And just for anyone that didn't know out there, <laughs> go for it. But just to chuck one in there, like as another one, because everyone knows I like that. I do really fancy Conza Easter, but I really fancy Bob and Car. I know it's a hunt and chase race, so obviously you can't get too excited, but I'm all over t- David Maxwell for that race. I'll be there on the Friday as well. I'll give him a little arm round there, see if I can get in the winners enclosure with him. So that's it. We're done. I'm going to cancel it. Now. I'm going to close it. Thank you all for your time. Merry Christmas. Best of luck at the Cheltenham Festival. Don't forget to like and subscribe if you've been watching for the last eight hours.